The rest of you are going to get there. That's what this service is designed for. Amen? Oh, I'm just picking on you. But t today is um, a, a special service as we just commemorate this time of the year. And we usually typically have this service on the Sunday night before Thanksgiving. We do a night of worship and, uh, and call it a night of Thanksgiving worship. But we decided to move it to Sunday morning. And uh, just felt like that uh, we would do that this year and change up from what we'd been doing. But thank you for being here. If you're a guest with us today, so glad you're with us. And you'll see some instruction in a moment uh, concerning how to fill out a welcome card. For the rest of us that's been here for a while, uh, we, we want you to know you're appreciated too. And uh, we're, we're glad to see all of you today in the house of the Lord. I want us to open up the service with prayer, and uh, you, can, you can remain seated because we're going to go ahead and, and do some things up front here and then get into our time of uh, singing and testimonies and then close out the service with communion together. But um, I want us to pray for these needs as you see them on the screen. Uh, I told Ryan, I talked with him a couple of days ago, and he'll be going in this afternoon and he'll be starting his chemo, getting ready then for his body to be prepared for the stem cell. And I told him we would pray especially for him. We thank God for the success he's seen over the last couple of weeks. And we believe that this is going to be successful every way. Uh, as you know, he may be in the hospital between now and the end of the year uh, for protection. And um, among other reasons. But let's pray for him. And just lift up these needs. Let's uh, pray for Brady this morning as Haley and uh, Kyle will be getting uh, more information this week. They tell me concerning um, the, uh, the, from the neurologist. So let's pray for, for little Brady that everything's going to continue to be healing for him and wholeness. Wendy Kent called me yesterday, very ill, uh, she said, and asked us to pray for her. And we didn't get the slide changed, but... Uh, let's pray for Wendy together too. Let's just pray together. If you would just go to the Lord in prayer and let's believe the Lord together. Father, we just thank you so very much for your goodness and your grace today. We thank you for this time we can set aside called a day of gratitude. We know every day, Lord, is a day of gratitude, but Lord, we want to just take this service and help us get focused for what life is really meant to be in you, a life of thanksgiving for your grace. And we give you praise for all of your blessings upon us, every one of them. Were we to, to count them, the psalmist said, we would not be able to number them. You are so good. Known and unknown to us are your blessings of grace. And we thank you, Father, today for salvation, for healing, for relationship restoration, for peace, joy in the Holy Spirit, for your goodness and kindness to provide in so many ways. And we thank you for that. We lift up these people on this screen, these people that are precious to you. And I'm asking you to heal them and be with them and give them peace in the midst of anxiety and sickness. Father, we lift up Ryan before you. and We lift up these others friends of this church and baby Brady today we're asking you Lord to heal all of these those that are sitting here this morning with an unspoken request Lord may they just sense your presence right now as we come in your name where you are gathered with us Lord and we can ask anything you said in this kind of an environment and we would see you perform it for your glory and for your will so that our lives may reflect you in every way. Thank you, Father, for your blessings on us today, for your healing and grace. In Jesus' name, amen and amen, amen. Uh, thank you for giving. You see the ways to give on the screen, and thank you so very much for uh, blessing the kingdom of God in your local church so that we can do so very much. Three ways to give, and we appreciate so very much. Your faithfulness that doesn't change. Thank you so very much for that. So um, in a few moments, we're going to just 
focus in on what the psalmist told us in Psalm 100 when he said, enter his gates, talking about the temple gates, had gates leading into that temple area, tabernacle area, enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Why? Because the Lord is good. Can I hear an amen? amen? The Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And His truth endures to all generations. So after uh, you see the, uh, the video announcements, we're going to enter into a very special time of worship, a special video intro. And let's just focus our minds on the Lord today, give Him praise and thanks, and be joyful in His presence. Amen. glad you're here to worship with us today. If you're a guest here, we want to connect with you. Fill out the connect card on the pew in front of you, scan the QR code on the bulletin you just received, or visit our webpage at vanillachurch.org and click connect at the top right corner. We have a gift waiting for you in the foyer. We look forward to seeing you at our next service. Holiday services and events at Vanilla Church of God this season are a great opportunity for you and your family to worship and fellowship with your church family. A schedule of these services are at the Welcome Center, so mark your calendar and plan to be with us. This month's men's fellowship is at the home of Lonnie's Samples. Men, it is an old-fashioned syrup cookie. Tuesday, November the 22nd at 6 p.m. Starting time is going to be around 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. You come when you want to. Just know that the syrup won't be ready for biscuit until 6 p.m. Syrup Sopping Biscuits, Tuesday night, 6 o'clock p.m. Just a reminder, there will be no midweek service this week. Enjoy Thanksgiving with your family. Sunday night, November the 27th, will be Hanging of the Greens. This is the time we gather to dress up our church for Christmas season. Everyone is asked to be here at 5 p.m. Sunday, December 4th, immediately following morning worship, will be our holiday fellowship meal. No live fruits. Meats will be provided. You bring your favorite holiday dish, dessert, and drink. Sunday, December the 4th. You can stay up to date with all of our church events by following our social media platforms. Those are the announcements for the week, but should you need Pastor Merritt or the staff, give us a call. Phone numbers are in your bulletin. And most of all, we look forward to seeing you at the next service. Have a good week. ahead and stand if you would.
this year some hard hits this year there was never a time when we went through them alone never a time when he didn't know what we were going through when he didn't see us in our sick bed he didn't see us with a broken heart he didn't see us when we're bereaved he didn't see us when we were lost and wondering because that's the kind of God that he is 
So this morning, whether you've been a Christian for one day or a hundred years, there's a reason to give gratitude today. Would you do that as we sing this last song? All my words fall short. I've got nothing new. How could I express? throw them up and give God a hallelujah. 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 Oh, isn't he good to us? Isn't he worthy today? Oh, yes, you are, Lord. Yes, you are. I bless you. I praise you. I honor you. I glorify you. Praise the Lord. Just let him work in your life right now. Just let the Lord work whatever you need. If you came in dejected and downcast, I'm telling you the joy of the Lord, your strength this morning. You can have that peace that'll flow like a river, the scripture says. Just let it flow. 
as you praise Him. You see, our praise is like a spark plug for our faith. It fires up our faith. When we really see God for who He is and praise Him, it increases our faith. Father, we thank You for who You are, Your goodness, faithfulness, greatness. We bless You in this place, and I pray faith will arise and Your people will be ministered to today by Your grace. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now, we're going to we're going to thank God for each other in our transition fellowship time, but I would be remiss if I didn't recognize Brother uh, Morris and Sister Catherine. And they've been through it the last uh, month or so, and we, just, we are just so glad to have y'all back. Thank you for being here today in this service and being part. Now, let's fellowship among ourselves. Would you do that? Just thank the Lord for somebody, everybody. I appreciate y'all. I love you. to have you back in service too. Amen. Good to see you in service. Good to see all of you today. Amen. Just before Brother Dwayne comes and reads some scriptures and then we're going to have some testimonies that I've asked to share today. Uh, we're going to turn our attention to the screen and, and see this uh, Thanksgiving overflow. Isn't that what it is? Thanksgiving overflow. The Bible tells us to give thanks in everything. So how do we do that? Sure, it's easy to be thankful when life is going well, but what happens when the journey becomes difficult? How do we give thanks in the midst of pain, struggle, or loss? You see, life has a way of breaking a heart of gratitude, piece by piece, Moment by moment, we lose sight of our calling to live thankful lives. This Thanksgiving, we need to be reminded of God's faithfulness. We need to stand on His promise to never leave us or forsake us. We need to trust the plans He has for us. Plans to give us hope and a future. When we fix our eyes on Jesus, Gratitude is inevitable. For he walks with us in the deepest valleys and on the highest mountains. Today, we place our trust in him alone. For this is where thankfulness overflows. about what I may say as before I said I want to read the scripture but as we advance in years Thanksgiving Christmas birthdays anniversaries become so much more precious to us I'm going to read from Psalms 103 verses 1 through 5 Taken from the New King James Version. The word states, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. 
want to read the second Peter Phillips verse. I want you to pay close attention to the punctuation. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities? Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from destruction? Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies? Who satisfies your mouth? with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. And I am so thankful that I have lived to see another Thanksgiving season. Thank you, Father. Good morning. Um, when Pastor uh, called to ask me to, um, actually I'm taking Brother Russell's place, some of y'all didn't know, he, he wanted to be able to be here to share, but when Pastor asked me, I, you know, things started running through my mind because there's so many things that I can um, praise the Lord for and uh, uh, give credit to the Lord for bringing us through um, but some of the things, I, like I said, there's many things I could go through for, for years, um, things that uh, the way the Lord has healed and done a work in my body and in my family. But um, one thing that came specifically to my mind was probably about 30 years ago. Um, you know, I was thinking about healing and, you know, the Lord is with us through everything. And there's different types of healing. You know, sometimes the Lord heals instantly. Um, you know, we don't see that enough anymore. 
or we're not hearing about it enough because people are not giving glory to the Lord and honor to the Lord for this. Um, but there's also healing through through our doctors and through medication and wisdom that the, that the Lord gives doctors. But when I go back and think about this specific thing come to my mind, about probably about 30 years ago, I'm not exactly sure if that's about right, but I didn't ask my mama, but I did have an instant healing. Um, I went to the eye doctor and they said, um, mama was with me, and they said, you have a detached retina. They got on the phone right then and started calling a surgeon. Well, we were, I think I was at an eye doctor maybe in Waycross. They wanted to send me to a surgeon in Brunswick. Well, the surgeon wanted us to come right on, and that's what the eye doctor wanted us to do. But my mama said, well, we can't go right now. Can they see us on Monday? Because this was like on a Friday. Could they see us on Monday? So Sunday when we got to church, we called for the elders of the church and the people of the church to lay hands on me um, and, and pray for me. So uh, we went Monday to see the doctor. There was no detached retina. And I give glory to the Lord for that because I believe the Lord, the Lord totally healed my eye because I could be blind today. Um, don't ask him because I can't see real good, but I'm not, I do not have a detached retina. <laughs> but, um, and then I was thinking about 22 years ago, I um, was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis and um, most of you know I'm a dental hygienist and I had been practicing about probably about five years and, and I had, um, was having a lot of pain in my hands, you know, and I'm thinking and I'm asking the Lord because I've served the Lord my entire life from a child, you know. My mama uh, always raised me in church and I'd been a Christian and, you know, seen, like I said, even a healing in my own body and in people uh, in my family in their bodies. And, you know, when I got this diagnosis and having so much pain and trying to work and, you know, I asked the Lord why? You know, why I'm so young? You know, why am I going through this? You know, but I knew I knew the Lord was in control. I knew he was with me every step of the way. And, um, you know, I, I had a lot of, which you can't look at my hands. I went to the doctors. Um, I went to the rheumatologist, my rheumatologist, about three weeks ago. And he was looking at my hands and any of y'all that want to come look I, I want you to look at them I want you to see this is God you know he said you can't look at your hands until you have no crippling no deformities is how he said it you have no deformities of your hands from that rheumatoid arthritis and that's 22 years almost 23 years ago now so I give I give glory to the Lord for that as well And then just last year, last year was a tough year for us. Um, we went through, we lost Ken's mom, I lost my best friend. We both were very, very sick with COVID. The Lord healed us from that. And then um, in the midst of that, in between uh, losing his mama and, and us being very sick, Ken was diagnosed with prostate cancer. You know, I never one time feared you know, when you hear that word, I didn't like that for a long time. I wouldn't even say that C word, you know, because I didn't want to claim it. Um, and, and so I wouldn't say it, but I never, you know, I, I told Ken, I said, you know, people's watching, you know. And that's one of the things with my diagnosis as well, too, is I know that, that um, you know, I've got, I can, I can say this every day to my patients, and a lot of my patients are in this room, and, and y'all know I probably even said it to you, you know, how blessed I am to still be able to be practicing, to be working with having, be, with a diagnosis of RA. Nathan and I talked about that. Kathy had even talked about that last week. But um, I, I knew that with us going through this, with this cancer, I, I didn't question the Lord. You know, I knew he was with us, and I knew that there was going to be a blessing for somebody. Somebody's watching. Somebody needed to see our faith in the Lord. And um, so, anyway, we went October of last year. 
had surgery, and of course, um, it was all contained. Um, there was no, there's no uh, cancer outside the prostate. It was all contained. Um, they even downgraded the cancer once the prostate was was biopsied, and of course, he has to go every three months to have blood work. And I, I actually testified to the praise team in October. We have been one year cancer free, and I give God the glory for that. And I do want to say, you know, there, like I said, there's different types of healings. And, you know, there's, there's healings when the Lord takes us from this world. You know, we don't, that's not always what we want. And, you know, it could be tomorrow for me. Or it could be tomorrow for you. But as long as we're ready, as long as we have our hope and our trust and our faith in the Lord, then we know where we'll be. Thank y'all. Laurie. Miss Laurie Page. Well, um, I'm sure I'm glad Robin took up about three minutes of my time. So <laughs> thank you, Robin. Uh, no, today I just want to say how grateful I am for my family. Um, a little backstory. Uh, last year, my dad's oldest sister passed away, and I did not know this. And I tell you this because I'm really thankful for the heritage of, of our Christian walk and in our family. Um, apparently, uh, and you all are familiar with the city, little city or town of Collins, there's a Methodist church and there's a Baptist church, and they're pretty close together. Well, I guess my dad was living there with his family, his little boy, um, and I think he and my aunt were less than 10 years old. And uh, they got in trouble one Sunday morning. They were not going to church. His parents didn't take them to church at that time. Uh, and they got in trouble, and they ran out of the house. And my grandmother ran after them. And so they knew they had to escape, so they ran into one of the churches. Church had already started, and they slipped in on the back pew. Well, my grandmother came in and sat right down with them on the back pew and sat through church. From that time on, my, my um, grandmother and grandfather had their children in church. So I thought that was kind of interesting, even though when, you know, your kids get a little rambunctious or whatever, they run from you when they know they're in trouble. He ended up in church, and I just thank God that he and my mom raised my brothers and I in church, and, um, and I'm so thankful that God blessed me with a godly husband. Um, we, you know, we've not had the perfect marriage in the last 32 years, but we've been there for each other, um, and then uh, God has blessed us, Jeff and I, with two wonderful children. And I'm so thankful for them. They've put up with me through a lot of things. <laughs> uh, you know, anybody that has kids know kids don't come with instruction manuals. Um, and that was the first thing that, you know, we, I thought of when we drove up from the hospital with Emily. I, I so remember sitting in the car, getting out and going, well, what do we do now? You know, there are no books um, except the Word of God. And you do your best. Um, using the word of God to raise your children, uh, just input there for anybody with small kids or even big kids. We still use the book to raise our big kids. Uh, but anyway, I'm just here to just thank God and tell you I'm so grateful to God for giving me a godly family, a godly heritage. Um, and uh, that, you know, I, I, I think of Ruth in the Bible. She didn't have to be with, she didn't have to go with Naomi. She didn't, but she was faithful. And that's what families are. They're faithful no matter what, no matter how ugly you can be, no matter how mad you can get. Uh, at the end of the day, you're all family. And I'm just so thankful for mine. And I love them so much. My kids couldn't be here this morning, but I love you guys. So, and my husband. But anyway, I'm grateful for them. Um, Ashlyn's going to come up. Aren't we just thankful for the young people in our church? I am. They just, they just bring life, don't they? So, anyway. So, um, hello. So, pastor asked me, and I was like, okay, i gotta, I got to be prepared. I was like, I, got, I can't get up there and freeze, and I can't, you know. So, I've um, got my, my phone up here, so, I mean, you know. Um, 
and I was thinking, I was like, how to put into words um, how thankful I am for my church family, and I'll do, I'll try my best to do justice, but no promises. Um, I've been at Bodea for as long as I can remember. Um, I, I still remember, you know, girls' jamborees and kids' fest trips with Brother Nathan and Valerie um, to Tennessee and Winterfest and fall retreats and even, the, you know, of course, the Tribe Wars games and on Wednesday nights, you can't forget those. Um, and all that was really cool, and uh, that was grateful to be a part of that experience, you know, but the, the really big takeaway from, I think, what I've had is just the love that you could feel, um, the love and comfort that you have from your church family. And um, it's been evident to me since I was younger that each and every single one of y'all care. Um, and back, looking back in youth group, it was always nice coming to church on Wednesdays, and you just have that welcoming feeling, and it's, you couldn't get that anywhere else. There was no welcoming, like, you know, seeing Brother AJ up in, in the back and smiling and picking at you, and of course, um, and, and it's like, you know, asking about school and asking about everyday life and uh, how important that was to me growing up and knowing that I had people that cared and knowing that they cared enough to, hey, how you doing? Check in on me, you know. Um, hugs and smiles, of course, and, you know, when we were younger, Terry, forgive me, I don't know where she's at, there she is, uh, but uh, when we were younger, fellowship was always hide and seek, that was, you eat and then you run and you hide, and then Miss Terry finds you around the corner running in the church, and it was game over, and then you had to go back and sit with your parents, um, but uh, of course, that's how it was when you were younger, um, but, you know, growing up, it's being with your church family, and being in the fellowship, and being in with the love and the constant surrounding of it um and i know that i have a family here and i can count on y'all to help me through life and uh a, and the best way i could describe it was prayer warriors um a lot of y'all know of, of everything i've been through in life and um i always knew that i had i had an army of prayer warriors behind me and i knew y'all just happen to know things and just hey you okay you know um Battling the anxiety and depression uh, throughout my life, you know, has been definitely a, a reoccurring, you know, and having my church family in times where I didn't really know my purpose, but I could still feel God pulling at me, and it was a lot of times through church family and a lot of times through callings and stuff, and uh, and you could always feel his presence, and like I said, it's just a peace that you've never had before. It's Sunday mornings, you know, it's, it's a piece, and you want to continue and have it throughout the week, and I'm extremely thankful, um, because the world's crazy, as you know, and um, especially now, and growing up in these times that we have now, you know, it's, you, you really have to stay grounded and uh, keep your head up, and um, I was, I'm really thankful that I was taught at a very young age that the path of Christ and letting him guide me through my decisions was the best decision I could ever make. Um, and, um, I was looking through, you know, Bible verses and, uh, Romans 12, eight really, uh, stood out to me. It says, so who are many are one body of Christ and individually members of one another. And this is basically saying, you know, your church family, you're meant to be one unit. You're meant to be with each other and support one another and come together. And, um, I'm just thankful that I can say with confidence that I have been in a church family with one unit and to help me through all my struggles in life and knowing that I always have someone there behind me. So, thank you guys. Thank you. Nice to know. <laughs> thank you so very much. Don't you just appreciate these testimonies and the people that gave them? Let's give God thanks for them in our lives. You know, several years ago, I was asked by a pastor to come be a part of a week-long revival. I was pastoring, and uh, he was going to have a different speaker every night. And he was, I was the first one he called, and he said, well, what night do you want? And I said, I want the first one, because these other guys that you've got lined up, I don't want to follow them. And I wish I had remembered that uh, this morning and, and had the testimonies after, after my presentation here in the Lord's Supper, because... Um, that was really wonderful. You blessed me this morning as you blessed the Lord. And uh, building on our theme uh, this morning, as we prepare our hearts to come to the table 
of the Lord. I, uh, I think about the wonderful experiences we grew up with. Probably you did. You had a great meal on Thursday and your mama cooked it, grandma cooked it, or you cooked it. But this morning, we're going to come to God's Thanksgiving meal. It's the greatest meal when Jesus Christ gave his life for every one of us and took that Old Testament Passover that had been going on for a couple thousand years and brought it in, brought it in to himself because he is our Passover. And there's a story in the life of Jesus with ten lepers. And it helps us understand why it's so important for us to take time to be thankful. And in Luke's gospel, the 17th chapter, we read these wonderful words that reminds us how bountifully blessed we are from God's grace, the grace of God in our lives flowing freely his blessings upon us as we heard from salvation to healing to family to church family as brother Dwayne read he he just read all of those things that's not exhaustive but he gives us a panoramic view of all the blessings did you know notice he emphasized that word thank you all and in this story in Luke's gospel chapter 17 In verse 11, we read these words. Now on his way to Jerusalem, that's Jesus, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. And as he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. Of course, they were in a leprous colony. That was what they did. It was a very lonely life. It was a very dejected life very isolated life. Actually, in the definition of some, it was no life. Have to live in a leper's colony. And they stood at a distance because it was not lawful because of the contagious condition of this skin disease called leprosy. They stood at a distance, called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, How pity on us. They called out first the name Jesus. The name that's above every name. Jesus. That means Savior. The angel said to Joseph and to Mary, give him the name Jesus. To Joseph, you shall call his name Jesus. Joshua, Yeshua, the Lord saves For, the angel said, he shall save his people from their sin. If you need a Savior this morning, if you're watching online and you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, call out to his name. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And they said, Master, not just Jesus, that name that's above every name that every knee's going to bow to, but they said, Master, signifying that you are Lord over nature. You're Lord over disease. You're Lord even over the demons. You're Master over it all. And this condition that we've got, Lord, is under your control. Master, how pity on us. And I just want you to put everything under his feet this morning if it's over your head. Just let him be Lord and let him be master in your life. And the Bible says, when he, Jesus, saw them, he said, go show yourself to the priest. Now the priests, according to the Levitical law, they were like the doctors. If you had a skin disease and you were cured from it, you could go to the priest and he had to examine and declare that you were, had recovered from your leprosy. And Jesus said, go show yourselves to the priest. But it wasn't just a medical thing. 
it was a great testimony. And what a testimony it would be to those priests that the Messiah had come. He's the healer. He's here. And as they went, they were cleansed. All ten of them. One of them, in verse 15, one of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice, he threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And I underlined that word thank because we're going to come back to that word in just a moment. He threw himself in worship at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan, a foreigner. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well story speaks volumes to us this morning as we prepare our hearts for communion taking time to be thankful for all of God's blessings for all of his goodness we, we've heard it this morning from the scripture from the songs from these testimonies all of his goodness and when this one leper when this one leper he realized that he was cleansed he came back and fell at Jesus' feet and, and he thanked him for the grace of God. It was the grace of God that had, it wasn't coincidental. It, it was the grace of God that heals all our diseases. It's the grace of God that cleansed him and gave him back his life again. And just a couple of things that I believe are important for us to live a life of thanksgiving. First of all, grace, or excuse me, gratitude is rooted in grace. Gratitude, thanksgiving, is rooted in gra grace. Did you know that the word thankful is literally rooted in the word grace? I'm talking about the Greek words that we translated our English version of the Bibles. Did you know those things, those two things, those two words, those two acts? Thankfulness, thanksgiving, the word in the Greek is rooted in the grace of God. And how can I not be thankful when I think about His grace, His amazing grace, His boundless grace? As a matter of fact, the word thanksgiving in your Bible or in this situation right here in Luke 11 and verse uh, Luke 17 and verse 14 this word thanks here and thanksgiving comes from the Greek word Eucharist and in a moment we're going to come to the Lord's table we call it in our tradition communion or the Lord's Supper but in some traditions they call it Eucharist and oh that is powerful because Eucharist in the Greek language that the word thanksgiving was translated to in our English Bibles, as you see it on the screen, it equals, it means thanksgiving. And this table that is before us, it's a thanksgiving meal today. It was prepared for us by our Lord Jesus Christ. No, this is not his actual body and blood, but he said as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. How many of you remember that old song, Come and Dine? I'm getting bad about talking about old songs. That doesn't mean I'm getting old. Come and dine, the master calls. Come and dine. Jesus has a table spread where the saints of God are fed. And I want to tell you, I, I'm going to enjoy Thanksgiving with my children and my family this Thursday around a table. But I'm going to enjoy this meal today. Remembering what Jesus and this meal represents that his grace accomplished. Right smack dab, if, if you could go to the slide, if you could go to the Eucharist slide, right smack dab in the middle of that word Eucharist, you'll see C-H-A-R-S, C-H-A-R-I-S, and that is the Greek word grace. Just as 
We translate Eucharist from the Greek over into our New Testament English word, Thanksgiving. That word, chorus, it means grace. And that's why Thanksgiving, this Thanksgiving meal, this Eucharist, is rooted in grace. Your Thanksgiving, your, my gratitude is rooted in the grace of God. As we come to this table this morning, nobody else could do this for us. We didn't earn it. We didn't deserve it. But as Romans 5, 8 and says, Romans 5, 8, God demonstrated his own love toward us in this, that while we were still sinners, I want you to get this, all ten were cleansed. God demonstrated his love for us while we were still sinners. Whether you receive the grace to be saved or not, God demonstrated his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Jesus died for all. And that's the great truth of us all this morning and for all of us, just represented in this ten. All of us, all of us. Whether you've got a relationship with Jesus or not, whether you're spiritual or non-spiritual, all of us. If you're watching by live stream this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ, all of us, you and I are constantly and have been under the blessings of God's grace. But this one leper out of 10 came back to be thankful for that grace, God's blessings, God's favor in his life. Because that's, that's what grace means. It means the gift of God. It means freely given from God. It means favor from God. It means the blessing of God. And these testimonies that we heard up front this morning these testimonies were, were thanksgivings to God's grace. Brother Elmer, salvation focus, and, and Robin, healing, God being with us. Glory, thankful for family. Ashlyn, thankful for church family. And, and as, as we think about the broad spectrum of blessing today, I, 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 I recall what John wrote when he talked about the incarnation in John 1. He, he wrote a little different than Luke about Mary and Joseph and the angels and the shepherds. He just said the word became flesh, the word. And he dwelled among us. And then he said in verse 16 of this word that came, he said, from his abundance, What's this? We have all, all received one gracious blessing after another. And God's blessings flows in this service this morning. God's blessings is flowing in your life. God's blessings, and, and he says, it's is, is one blessing after another. One, one uh, translation said, grace upon grace. You know what that reminds, reminds me of? Going to the ocean, which Miss Kim really likes for me to take her there. And those ocean waves come in and hit the shore. That's, that's God's blessings. His goodness is really running after us. Amen. One blessing, one blessing, one blessing after another, after another. Like the waves of the ocean. His gracious blessings coming one after another. Now notice all of these lepers received God's grace of cleansing. But only one took the time to be thankful, to fall on his knees, to look up to heaven, to look up to Jesus and realize where his blessings came from. And again, everybody's a recipient, but there's a difference, you see. And the only difference is, the only difference in those that are blessed are those that take time to be grateful those that take time to be thankful and those that don't have God in their thinking at all. And these other nine lepers, they just, they just went about their life. They got cleansed. They knew they were cleansed, but they just went on with life, never looking up to heaven. Now, they were happy. <laughs> they were happy. That, well, don't you think they were happy? They could get their life back, go back to their families, go back to their Livelihoods, they were happy, but they were unthoughtful. And they were unthankful. Did you know that the word thank and the word think 
comes from the same root. And when we just stop and think, oh, God's blessed us with so much. Salvation, healing, family, employment. He's blessed us with so much. Take time to be thankful is his message to us. Like this one leper. There's two attitudes this morning that that we can see. Two attitudes toward grace. And it's this. Those who take, take it for granted. That's the only difference between us. Those who take it for granted and those who are grateful. Because all of us are blessed equally. All of us. So many today just go about their way. Like these other nine. But I want to be that, that one that was an example. And I want to be that example. Not those that take it for granted. This is the attitude of that other nine. Just taking it for granted. You know, I appreciate our young people. I appreciate Ashlyn. And, and when I say this, I'm not throwing a, a cloud over all the young people. Because I know some old people that have this take it for granted this entitled mentality that we see so pervasive in our culture today well I didn't work for it I didn't earn it I didn't deserve it but I want it it's mine I ought to have it, it you know it ought to be mine now God's grace is free but this my, mindset that's jealous of everybody else and I'm entitled but I want to tell you the Lord is saying to us as he did in that Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5 and 45 he says be children of your Father in heaven and he's talking about loving even your enemies like the Father loves us he cares now watch this for us all he causes his son everybody say his son not my son take, can't take it for granted 92 million miles away from the earth he put it here to keep everything in rotation and gravitational pull and, and we enjoy such blessings tangibly and materially from. But he calls as his son, watch this, to rise on those other nine lepers and on that one leper that was cleansed, all of them. He causes his son, his son, to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain, his rain, on the righteous and the unrighteous. And as we look up to heaven this morning and think about his grace, and again, you know, every blessing is a blessing of his grace. Now, we, we start with salvation. That's the greatest. If you don't get any others, if you got that, you got eternity. But God has blessed us with so very much. And I just want to take time this morning with you to be thankful. Just one last thing about this leper that was healed. Cleansed. The last statement that Jesus made to him, rise and go, your faith has made you well. Now get this, that word well is a different Greek word than the word cleansed. All of it, we're not all nine, ten cleansed. As they went, they were cleansed. That's, that's another Greek word for healing and cleansing. But this word well or whole is sozo in the Greek. And, 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 it, and it means salvation. That's where we get our word salvation. But it means, watch this, it means to be whole and well spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, completely whole. And here's the thing. When you and I are grateful, when you and I have a heart not complaining about my job, not complaining in life, but we're really grateful and thankful for what God's gave. We're not negative and ugly, but we're thankful for what God has given to us. I want to tell you, that's the, that's the person that's well. That's, that's the person that's so-so. That, that's the person that's, that's, that's got in his mind and his emotions whole and peace. That's the person of joy. That's the person that's full as those blessings are coming in. Wave after wave after wave after wave. That's the person. Two attitudes. One takes it for granted, the blessings. The other are grateful. 
For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So the Lord prepared this table before us this morning. It's his Thanksgiving meal for every one of us. It's his grace meal. No one else could do it but him. I'm going to ask our ushers to come and prepare to serve us. And as ushers come, I'm going to ask our praise team to come too. And men, as you come, if you would just stand in front here just for a moment, and, and I'll give some instruction, and then I'll ask you to serve the congregation in just a moment. Just, just a couple of things that I like to do for us, I believe that the Lord leads me to do. And I'd like for you and me to hold our elements Hold our elements until all are served. And we're going to partake of Holy Communion together. Uh, that's scriptural, I believe. It's no, okay to take communion with just your family or just yourself. But when we're in the body of Christ, I believe it signifies that unity that Ashlyn talked about this morning. And when you get your cup, go ahead. There's a thin, for those of you that are not familiar with a disposable cup, there's a thin cellophane on top that high, has the bread, go ahead and lift that up before you take the foil off the cup and get that prepared, would you please? In Vidalia Church of God, we practice open communion. What does that mean? You don't have to be a member of this local church. Communion is open to all believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I would say to anybody that's not a believer, this would be a wonderful opportunity for you to give your heart and life to Jesus Christ and make this your first act of worship as a saved child of God. Amen? And then, as we partake of this communion, as the elements are being passed, the Bible tells us to take it in praise and thanksgiving, not take it in an unworthy manner means I'm looking up because this is his meal this is not something I've done for Jesus today this is something he's already done for me and I'm doing this in remembrance of him hallelujah and I'm giving thanks like this one leper for his grace today let's examine our hearts and let's just be thankful and focus on him for his grace today in every area let's pray father as I just pray over this congregation, as I prayed yesterday over these plates of elements, I'm praying that, Lord, today that people are going to be healed, that people are going to be whole, and many of us are going to live like this one leper. That's what we're going to have peace of mind. We're going to be full of joy. We're going to be whole through our gratitude today, through our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that you would touch every one of us. If there's one that doesn't know you as Savior and Lord, may they know you as Savior and Lord today. And I bless you for what you've done, who you are, in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers, would you serve us at this time? Praise team's going to lead us in a chorus. Sing along with them if you would.
out to him. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. sin and a shame for us all on that cross, naked, publicly humiliated, knowing what he faced. And when he had given thanks, he broke that bread, gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body. Before we partake of the bread, if you need healing in your body, you're welcome to come and we're going to anoint you and pray for you. This broken body of Jesus represents that wellness, that wholeness that that leper understood. Spirit, mind, and body. He was wounded for your transgressions and mine. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. With his stripes, we are healed. Hallelujah. Let us partake of the bread. Be thankful. Oh, yes, Lord. I don't forget your benefits, Lord. I praise you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you've ever been healed or you haven't ever been healed, there is an eternal healing. I'm telling you, we walk in His goodness and His blessings and His grace every day. I thank God for all of those times, seen and unseen, known and unknown, that He protected my life from destruction. Anybody else? Lord, we bless you for your broken body in love for every one of us to watch over us and care for us until you get us home with you in eternity. Our families, we thank you, Lord. Then he took a cup and again, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it all of you. This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Let us partake of the cup. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I was in a service a couple of weeks ago and they opened up with that old song, I Never Shall Forget the Day. And all of my sin was rolled away. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. Sometimes we, we don't have that fire of our first conversion. Jesus told the church at Ephesus, you've left your first love. Oh, may it not be so. Let's lift our hands and thank him for loving us and saving us. And we're saying, Lord, we do this in remembrance of you. And we never shall re forget that day that all my sin was rolled away. Lord, we thank you for a cleansed heart. We thank you, Lord, for freedom and eternity. And all of our guilt was erased, Lord, that day. And we, Lord, had the assurance of eternal life and joy of heaven. We thank you for that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's house, in my Father's kingdom. Amen. Amen. 
lift your hands this way. Anybody else you want to come up for prayer or just let the Lord touch you today? Anybody else, you're welcome to come. Terry, praise team, sing us. Sing that again. Just I just want to thank him. Thank you, Lord. And sing it with them. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. I'm so grateful. I just want to thank you. Lift your hands. I just want to thank you. Praise is the spark plug of faith. I just want to thank you. We praise him. I'm so Our faith is building. We're going to pray for John's mom. She's got a diagnosis this week and uh, needs a touch of healing and needs peace. How many of you believe that the chastisement of her peace was all on Jesus? Anybody else, if you want to come and be prayed for, please do. Let's believe God for healing this morning according to James 5 and 13. You know, there's no distance to, to prayer. No, Many times Jesus touched people, but many times he just spoke the word at a distance and say, I'm going to speak the word, and your servant's going to be healed at your house. How many of you believe that the psalmist said he sent his word and he healed them? And that's what we're believing today. That's what we're believing. There's no distance to prayer. There's no expiration date to it either. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, I just feel your presence. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that you healed all of our diseases. John's mom, Lord, her diseases have been healed today at the cross of Calvary. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. Oh, Lord Jesus, just reach down right now and give her peace, Lord. We all know. We all know, Lord, how it's what it's like to be anxious about a, a severe diagnosis and an unknown. And Lord, we just ask you, God, that that peace that passes all understanding that you promise is going to keep constant guard over her heart and over her mind as she rests in you, Jesus. We declare healing. We believe you for it and we receive it today. We receive the healing virtue of our Jesus into her life. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Amen. Amen. Lift your hands and give you thanks. Let's pray for Sister Hollander. And ask the Lord to touch her today. Ask the Lord to touch her. Thank you, Jesus. Pray for this need, this degenerative arthritis that she's facing and going through in the spine. These eyes today. Father, this is your child redeemed by your blood property of the Most High God. You bought her with the blood of Jesus. She's yours today. And I anoint her with oil in the name of the Lord according to your word that represents the Holy Spirit who is here right now ministering the grace of Jesus to heal Sister Hollander. I give you thanks and I give you praise and I receive it by faith today in her life, in her body, in Jesus' name. Amen. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Hallelujah. Let's give him praise today. Let's give the Lord praise. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Just one more time. Yes. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you, Lord. I'm so grateful. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. I'm so grateful. have a wonderful week of Thanksgiving with your family and just to let you know 
I'll be in Colorado this week with my family celebrating Thanksgiving out there. We're not going to go for Christmas this year, so I'll be there. Uh, I won't be in the service with you next Sunday, but uh, uh, Pastor Brandy will be preaching, and you'll have a great service. But have a wonderful Thanksgiving. God bless you. I love you.